Today's segment of Sound Balming is brought to you by Jimmy and Mary's Authentic Body Care. I cannot express to you how much we love, love, love their products. Although we use them all year, as the weather gets colder, we need these products even more. The dreaded drop in temperature, the dryness, the itchiness, and the unnecessary flakiness is inevitable. Shea Butter from Jimmy and Mary's Authentic Body Care is the only thing that works for my skin and hair needs. Not only do these products cure my dry skin, the whipped butter goes on smoothly and doesn't leave that uncomfortably thick, sticky residue. Bonus? It smells absolutely amazing. There are so many different scents to choose from too. Not only do they carry skincare products, there are products for authentic living, face, shower, hair and beard, spritzers and perfumes, and bath products. Let me tell you, we cannot even keep the stuff in the studio. The entire production team, as well as all our children, use Jimmy and Mary's products. Jimmy and Mary's take pride in creating quality, handcrafted products from simple ingredients for the entire family. Their products are made for all skin types and are 100% handmade, 100% vegan, and 100% cruelty-free. Skin care is important. Moisture is key, and keeping our skin and hair hydrated is essential. I cannot emphasize how much we trust Jimmy and Mary's for all of our skin care needs. Hurry on up to JimmyandMary's.com and check out their products. Did I mention service is fast and efficient too? Don't forget to mention that you heard about Jimmy and Mary's authentic skin care on Sound Balming. Use the discount code Sound Balm 20 to get 15% off. That's Sound Balm 20 for 15% off at Jimmy and Mary's Authentic Skin Care. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Sound Bombing. I created this show for people who want to experience a radical, life changing journey through the sounds of my diverse guests. I hope that each sound you hear on this show will strengthen your faith encourage your dreams, and challenge you to awaken the greatness within you. Drop the bomb. Drop the bomb. We're going to drop the bomb. We're going to drop the bomb. We're going to drop the bomb. This is a journey into sound. A journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new values, and a new experience. Lamar Darnell Shields. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever the time of the day is, you're at the right time with the right person, with the right people, and you're at the right show. Welcome to my show and happy new year. I'm your host, Dr. Lamar Darnell Shields, the creator of Sound Bombing. And my goal with this show is to introduce you to the people with the ideas that will help you unlock your full potential. Like my last guest, Dan Reardon. Dan blew us away with all of his information about finding your purpose and your passion. But his passion is about helping people produce better outcomes in their lives, relationships, and businesses by giving them steps to improve the choices they are making. Dan has an amazing book out called Signals, where in that book, he talked about all the signals and all the information that the universe is sending to us. And however, many of us don't pay attention to that. And today's show is sort of right in line with that conversation. Now, I'm going to take some of you all way, way, way back. Do you all remember this show? I think Whoopi Goldberg won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor in the show. The film was called Ghost. And what's interesting is one of my favorite films, but it's what Hollywood typically does when they don't really understand, you know, some of the things about the spiritual world. I'm talking about the scene when Whoopi Goldberg is pretending to be a psychic and she's sitting in the room and she's having a conversation with a, a woman 
about her family. And then Whoopi is pretending that she knows what's going on, but she gets really excited when the woman offers her some money. So let's take a look at that right now. So you've got to be a believer, Mr. Santiago. Are you a believer? See, si, see, si, I believe, I believe. Let us begin. seem to make contact. I, I don't feel his bar. No, wait. I'm feeling something. Did he know someone by the name of Anna? Consuelo? Lucita? Julieta? Josefina? Linda? Maria? Sissy! He's Mama. She is Maria. Yes! Praise God! I knew he was with his mama. Oh, my God. So as you see, that is Hollywood really playing um, and really not understanding what this phenomenon of psychic or medium means. And so I am excited today to talk to an individual who has this amazing gift. But do you really know what a medium does or do you are you really pr are privy to the information that Hollywood has? Or have you done your own research? Have you ever wanted to connect with past over loved ones on the other side to give you messages from beyond the grave? Well, it's crucial that you have your facts straight and do your research, especially if you're considering consulting a psychic or a medium for advice. Well, don't worry. After today's show, I guarantee you will have a greater insight into the world of psychics because I've, I am honored to have in the bomb shelter with me Barbara Dahl, go, who's going to talk about what it means to have this gift. Barbie is, is it Barbie or Barbara? It's Barbie. Barbie. <laughs> let me go back. <laughs> oh, let me go back. I was like, hold up. Okay. Y'all, that doesn't go. <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me go back. Do you really know what a median does or are you only privy to the sensationalized portrayals as seen in Hollywood movies like the one I just showed you in Ghost? And have you ever wanted to connect with past over loved ones on the other side to give you messages from beyond the grave? It's crucial that you have your facts straight and to do your research, especially if you're considering consulting a psychic or medium for advice. Don't worry, after today's show, I guarantee you will have a greater insight into the world of psychics because I'm honored to have joining me today in the bomb shelter, Barbie Doll, who is going to talk about this gift that she has. Barbie's sole purpose is to bridge the gap between the living and the deceased. She is able to communicate with souls on the other side. Barbie has the ability to communicate through mediumship and her psychic clairs. She's also she can also channel her spirits using her to directly communicate to the world. She relays the messages she has given through one-on-one -on -one readings via teaching classes to help others develop their own abilities through personal coaching and most recently via her podcast and her blog sites. In addition to being clairvoyant, she is a Reiki practitioner, blogger, and from what I know, she is a lover of books. And I'm so excited to invite Barbie Doll today in the bomb shelter. Welcome to Sound Bombing. How are you today? And let our listeners know where you are calling in from. Hi, Dr. Lamar. Um, I'm great today. Thank you. I'm excited to be on your show. And I'm calling from Orange County, California. Orange County in the building. California must be on my radar because my guest that I had prior to you, Barbie, was from San Francisco. I'm a lover of Cali. Cali has some of the best vegan restaurants on the planet next to Florida, next to Chicago, next to New York. No, actually, California is at the top of the food chain. How are you doing? I know we're dealing with the pandemic. We're dealing with all these other things that are taking place. So how are you doing? I'm 
doing good. You know, like everybody else, I've got my husband and my kids. Sometimes I like my kids. Sometimes I wish they went to school and they'd go away, just like my husband. But, you know, like everybody else, we're surviving. So we're going to have a good time because I am in agreement with what you just said. But I get excited to talk to adults because all day long I'm talking to young people, either my children or somebody else's kids. So I get excited to get dressed up, to, to have a, a grown post person conversation. But this conversation I'm really excited about because it's something that's very, very interesting to me because not only have I been studying this phenomenon, but I have several friends who are psychics, medians, or seers, or however you describe it. But I wanna to talk to you first, I wanna ask you this question. What is the difference between a psychic and a medium? So a psychic is somebody who can like see into the past, present, or future. They're connecting with you, what's going to happen with you. A medium connects with people who have passed over on the other side. So like a psychic would talk to guides, like your guides. Your, your psychic would talk to um, maybe things from other realms, but they're not talking to people in souls that actually crossed over on the other side. So wow. a medium is different in that aspect because it takes a higher vibration and connection to understand and be able to talk to those souls and get a message across clearly enough so that you know we actually connected with the person we're talking to. And, and you are considered both a psychic and a medium, correct? Correct. Yes, exactly. So there's, so everybody's intuitive, right? So that would be everybody's what you would call a psychic. It's, I don't prefer that word, but that's the word that's known. So I like the word intuitive because everybody's intuitive, but you can be intuitive. So you get like a bad gut feeling about something and you know, then, you know, you either trust your gut or you don't, but a medium on the other side, let's say grandpa wants to talk to you and grandpa's been flicking the lights and you're not paying attention but you can't necessarily hear him. He's trying to flick the lights and not pay attention. You would go to a medium to get more messages from him because you're not necessarily connecting with him on the other side to get verbal messages. So Barbie, can you explain to my listeners what your intuitive gifts as a psychic medium and spiritual healer entail and how, how are they different? So for me, I've always just, I didn't even know I had gifts. I just thought it was normal, right? So I would like hear, hear stuff, see stuff, whatever the case may be. They're different in the aspect of now I've learned how like rein them in, right? So if I'm sitting with you and I'm talking to you and you want to talk to somebody in particular, then we go down that path road instead of just being like um, everybody else who kind of doesn't have the skill to be able to pull it in together and channel just that one individual person that you want to talk to on the other side. So then what was your first experience like? I do have several spiritual teachers, one that is a personal friend. The other one has just become my spiritual teacher who they both have to give. And then I've also had several readings. I have reading from African priests. I have reading from mediums. I have reading from what I call seers. But, you know, I'm always intrigued with their gift. And I'm going to tell you some of the, as we're, as we're having a conversation, I'm going to share some of the funny conversations I had with them about their gifts. But what was your first experience like? So I can remember, like, I didn't have a lot of friends in school because I was the weird one. And it was mostly because when I would talk to people, I would tell them like, hey, you know, when your grandfather did this, and they were like, what are you talking about? My grandpa's dead. And I didn't understand, like I was getting a message from somebody on the other side. I just knew that, you know, maybe their favorite color was yellow because this person bought them a yellow dress. So I was kind of like that weird kid that didn't have, you know, any friends and everybody was like, I wasn't allowed to play with them. Their family was kind of afraid of me. So those were the experiences that I've always had. And I just, I don't have a first experience. It's what I've always done. And how old, how old were you when you were having those conversations? Because I know if you and I were playing on the playground, you said, hey, Lamar, you're up <laughs> you're saying so. I'd be like, girl, what, is something wrong with you? But then I would be yeah. like, I would then go home to my mother and say, ma, you know, because I was, I definitely intuitive, asked a lot of questions, call it nosy, whatever it is. But again, I would have gone home and asked those questions. How, do you remember how old you were when you first had these feelings? Well, I remember being in second grade, and I don't know if you remember the Bloody Mary, where you go, yes. Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. Okay, exactly. So I thought it was fun, right? Because like I talked to things on the other side, but I didn't really know what they were. So I had a couple girls that were my friend for, friends for a brief period of time, and they were talking about that. And I was like, cool, let's go into the bathroom and do that Bloody Mary thing. So we go into the bathroom, we do that and stuff. And then the next thing I know, the next day, this other bigger girl comes over to me. And she tells me she's going to kick my butt. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she said that I scared her little sister and that I'm a freak 
And so that I was talking to spirits on the other side and I was never allowed to talk to her sister again. So <laughs> that's kind of when I knew that wasn't normal. Wow. So, so then what is your process when you are reading for a client or a family member? And then how do you receive your information? So I receive it. Um, so my process is, um, it comes all the time, but if I want to channel it during um, a specific reading, then I'll just set the intention that, you know, this reading is for that person and whoever they need to speak to will come through. Sometimes if you come in, you want to talk to somebody, but there's somebody else who has a message that you need in your life, that person gets priority. So I'll give you the message from the person you want to talk to, but first we're going to go through the, the messages that you actually need to receive. Okay. And then as far as like, I don't read for friends and family because then they contact you all the time. And they want messages all the time. I've lost so many friends because instead of asking me how I'm doing, they want to know what I think about this guy that's on Tinder. And I'm like, no, 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 we're good. Like, I don't need to be involved in that. Um, and so, uh, so I was telling you my process. And what was your other question? No, you. And then I said, how do you receive your information? You sort of, mm. you, how do you receive it? So we all have all these different clairs. We all receive information. For me, I received most of my information, which would be called like a download because I'm a channel. So they literally just download information into my head, which would be like, I would all of a sudden say like, um, you know, this person named Bobby's coming through. And I have no idea, but that's just the information I came through, the name Bobby. So the name Bobby would just come through and I would basically hear it in my mind. Sometimes after I start talking about it, then I'll get like a visual of it. Sometimes I just get like, I hear voices and I think everybody's hearing this voice and I'll say, did you hear that? And people are like, no, I have no idea. And then sometimes I feel it. So like if somebody died, like from like a heart attack, my chest will get tight. And I know that that's my sign of a heart attack. So a medium usually has what's called like a dictionary, a psychic dictionary. And we have certain signs that mean certain things. So they show me balloons. That means that it's like an anniversary or a birthday. They show me an apple. It means that that person's usually a teacher. So we have all these different things. And for me, like a, my chest getting um, like hard to breathe and stuff like that is usually like a heart attack or something in the lungs. Well, you saw in the opening where I played the clip from the famous film Ghost, where Whoopi Goldberg is portraying herself as a, as a seer, an intuitive or a psychic or a medium. As you look at that clip, and I want you to think about this question, what are your thoughts about that clip? And then what are some mis common misconceptions about mediums and psychics? Yeah. So my thoughts are, it's hilarious, right? Love that clip because one, because she's faking it and then all of a sudden she finally has to deal with it and she can't get rid of him. So you know that part where she can't get rid of him. Yeah, so that's real. So sometimes when they have a message and they need you to get it to somebody, they don't go away. And you have to be like, give me a break. There's times like I would be sitting, you know, in the restroom and I, all of a sudden all this stuff pops into my head. I'm like, come on, just give me a break. I just need a moment. So I think that part's funny because she didn't know what she was playing with and then all of a sudden she got it. But it's a big misconception. Well, one, there's a lot of misconception, but then there's a lot of truth to it. So there's a lot of fake people out there, right? And I think there's also a lot of people who are trying to make money off of it. So they're milking people's emotions. So I really think that you have to be careful with a person that you're talking to, read all of their reviews, if they're on, you know, different websites and stuff like that. Um, if they ever tell you you have a curse, never go back to them again. That's the biggest moneymaker for people when they try to say that you have a curse and they have to remove it and it's going to be X, Y, Z amount of money. And that is absolutely not going to be true. Like the, so they do a reading on you. And then mm -hmm. is there another word instead of saying the curse? Because I've had those conversations with people where they want to continuously do mm -hmm. the work on other people. And I would say, mm -hmm. well, I want to do the work on me, not mm -hmm. another person who's not in this space. Right. So they use the word attachment. Oh, you have a dark entity attached to you. All of these different things. A psychic or a medium should never scare you. The stuff that's coming from us is coming from the white light, from love, 100% pure love. So everything that we get for you is going to be either healing, a message that you need, or pure love, but nothing that's ever scary. That is not our job. They don't give us that kind of information from the other side. So anything like that is like a big red flag that that person is just trying to milk you for money. And that's the hardest thing in this industry because we do this to heal, help, heal and help people. Trust me, it's not an easy job. You, and it's really embarrassing sometimes if you're very careful of little kids make sure that, you know, I'm a consultant, they, the people in the neighborhood can't know I'm a psychic or medium because people won't let their kids play with my kids. 
So it's not like we do this because we love to do it. It's do it, we do it to heal people and it's a gift that we give to the world at a cost to us. So if people are trying to milk you for money and tell you scary things, they're not the real deal. So as you've gotten older and more seasoned in your profession, did you pursue any training to help you hone your skills as a, as a, as a psychic uh, and a healer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I did different certification courses, which were basically exactly like you said, to hone the skills, because the skills are there, you just have to figure out how to use them, right? And so I did, I would say about three years between psychic mediumship, healer, um, so Reiki energy, doing the Reiki energy and becoming a Reiki master, and all of those things. You People in general, though, and this is what I teach in my classes, everybody has the ability to be intuitive. We are all intuitive. We all have those gut feelings. We all know when something's not right. You know, you walk into a room and you can feel in the room, it's dirty, right? It's nasty. You just know it's thick and dirty. Or you meet somebody and you're like, ooh, not a nice person. These are all the same gifts that we use in the psychic mediumship world, except for we actually honor them and listen to them instead of just thinking, oh, that was just my head. So then how do you help people to then hone on those skills? Because I was told a while ago when, when I had my first psychic experience with a friend of mine, um, and she said to me, you have the same gift. And now people that know me, my mind is constantly racing. And I know if I were to really sit still, and meditation is one of the things that really keeps me focus Barbie to make sure I, I sort of hone on those gifts. But I remember her saying that to me. She says, Darnell, you, you have the same gifts that I have, but you're sort of all over the place because your mind is constantly working. How do you then help people? Because I'm like you, I believe that we all have these gifts or these abilities to see, but I think that you all, people, people like you have a deeper seeing ability. It's like the glimpses that you put on are, are, are much clearer than maybe the average person. Am I wrong in that and what I'm thinking? You're right. What I always tell people is like this. It's like going to the gym. So you go to the gym, you don't start off lifting 500 pounds, right? You go to the gym, you start, yeah, you did. Well, you're different. You're special. <laughs> people that know me like, no, he is lying to the psychic. You can barely lift your weight. <laughs> we weren't talking about a bagel, okay? We were talking about the gym. <laughs> No. Um, so, you know, you go to the gym, you don't start off really, really. I mean, if you do, you're going to, it doesn't work, right? You get burnt out. It doesn't work. It's the same thing in this world because it's energy that's coming at a higher vibration. So you can't go at it full force because you have to get used to it, right? So you start off by practicing with little tools. So like if you were taking an intuitive class with me, maybe we would play with like um, Oracle or um, tarot cards. And we would just talk about like, you know, how do you ask the cards a question and things like that. And then that would just be the one skill you learned for that moment. And then you would play with that skill until you became familiar with it. And then you could take another class. Like, um, so I teach classes on, I'll pull up pictures of um, missing people. And then we'll, we'll just have them touch the picture, look at the picture. What messages do you get? It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. You're just practicing. You're building that muscle. So what the people like me are, are we're just people who have bigger muscles because we've been doing it longer and we do it more often. So Barbie, how did you know that being a seer or a psychic, you, you like, I want to correct this. You like to be called an intuitive person, right? Yeah. And a seer is even better than a psychic for me. Just, I don't like the word psychic. It has a bad rep. So how did you know being a seer was the right path for you? You could have chosen any profession out there but what was it about this that you said this is the path that i want to that i want to take and i know you do other things reiki and body healing and, and you you do other things when, when you talk about helping people deal with stress and and burnout but what was it about this that you said this is the path that i want to stay on well it's funny you mentioned burnout because that's exactly what happened so i was in a very lucrative business working in banking um, for a long time, I did extremely well, I was making a lot of money, and I was working myself to death. And literally what happened about two years ago, I was still taking doing classes and doing all of this stuff like for fun on the side, um, as kind of almost like a hobby. But about two years ago, I literally like my body shut down, I was almost near death, like my all of my organs stopped working, my blood tests came back, like I just nothing was functioning right. And it was due to the amount of stress that I was putting on myself with that other job that I was doing. 
And I did amazing at it. I was great. I was a top producer. I was doing wonderful, but it wasn't my soul's purpose. So as I was doing it as, and I was doing great and I was, you know, making all of this money, I still felt like I didn't, um, I wasn't content. So I would just work harder thinking if I could work harder, I would become more content, right? If I could make more money, I would be more content. What I found is that after I had that burnout and I had time to myself, that really where my contentment came is offering my gifts to people to help them heal. And that's our job is to help people heal, right? If you feel like you lost somebody and you didn't get to say goodbye to them, if you get to come see me and you truly know that we've connected so we do things like we confirm, I give you information that's enough information that you know that I'm connected to the person I'm saying I'm connected to, okay? They give us these little bits of information just to give confirmation. And then if you get to have that conversation and say, I'm sorry I didn't make it to your bedside before you passed away. I'm sorry I didn't get there. I'm sorry I didn't take that time you feel that big, huge weight lifted off of your shoulder and you feel like now you can move on your, with your life without that regret. Well, tell me, uh, Barbie, about the people who come to you for reading. And then how do the questions differ from men and women or, or do that? Well, I would say majority of the people are women um, because I believe um, in the, the intuitive world, although everybody is intuitive, women tend to um, latch onto it a little bit more and trust it a little bit more. I think that men are taught in society not to trust anything that they feel and intuition is all feeling, right? Um, so I would say majority of the people are women and I have to be careful with that too because there's some people who come and they want like, um, they become addicted to you, they become codependent. And so what happens is like I told you before with like the, the people I would say that are, I hate to use the word bad, but I would say that they're bad. Um, psychic comedians and stuff is they like the codependent people who continue to come back over and over and over and over and so for me when they come it's like it's for that moment and if you need if you want to see me like you want to refer a friend or you want to see me like a year from now or whatever that's fine but really you don't need to come back and see me that often if I did my job right wow yeah that is some great advice for those that are out there who are interested in sitting down with a seer or a psychic or a medium or however you want to define it um, because I, I think we do, I'm loving the direction that you're going in because you're talking about serving. And of course you pay X amount of dollars per minute. You pay $60, $70 per session. And you keep going back and you keep going back and you're not teaching the individual the lessons. You're giving a quote unquote report, but you're really, really not teaching them uh, the lesson. Can you tell me some of the most common questions uh, people ask you? I can. Let me just tell you something real quick. So that's called spiritual bypassing. And it's a true thing. You can look it up. And it's what people do to avoid life is they continue to go to a seer or a psychic or whatever, whoever to give them advice instead of them making those decisions and choices for themselves. So if people have the opportunity to look that up, make sure that they're not becoming somebody who's trying to bypass living their life by going to like a seer um, to answer their question. So the most common questions, it depends on whether it's um, for mediumship or if it's for psychic. So psychic is the same thing every single time. Love, money, um, what is my purpose? Um, they always wanna ask about a partnership, right? Somebody that was either they're lacking a partner, they're with a partner, um, they have questions about, most of the time if they're asking about a partner that they're with, they're not happy in it. And that's the part of the coaching that I do is because oftentimes if you're with a partner and you're not happy, let me tell you, it's not 100% the partner's fault. They want you to go as a psychic. They want you to say, oh yeah, it's his fault. He's doing this or she's doing this or blah, 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 blah. And that's not the case. It's a two-way street, right? And so again, it goes back to a good psychic versus a bad psychic. What are we going to tell you? Well, we're going to tell you, well, this is what we see is going on. Here's your part in it. Here's their part in it. Do you want to make it work? Are you here because you want me to give you an out? If you need an out, just choose the out. You don't need me. Do you want to make it work? These are the things you can do to make it work. Well, speaking of make it, making it work, I, I know my listeners want to know more about talking to people in this other world, the graveyard, heaven, whatever we, whatever you choose to call that space. So, so Barbara, tell me what is it like to be a seer who also communes with the dead? And then what are the best ways that we can communicate with the deceased loved one? So everybody can communicate just simply by talking or thinking. So if I'm thinking like uh, my, my best friend passed away last year. So if I'm thinking, 
you know, I want to talk to Barb. I say her name is Barb too, but she is Barbara. Um, if I want to talk to her, I just say, I just start talking to her, usually in my mind, because the already people think I'm crazy. So if I talk out loud, it goes worse. Um, but, you know, I just start talking to her in my mind. And then a lot of times you will just notice if you just give it a moment, you'll get like a feeling, like sometimes I'll get like a hugging feeling. Um, or you can get like a thought and that's usually them giving you a message. So they can play with electricity extremely easy. That's like one of the easiest things for them to do. So lights flicker and people will be like, oh, that's a coincidence, do it again. Well, you can't command spirit, but oftentimes they will do it again. Um, sometimes if you're thinking about them and then you see like um, hummingbirds are big, they'll just like a hummingbird or a butterfly will fly by. That's them kind of just giving you a message. My grandpa sends me pennies with the head up. If it's a penny with the heads down, it's not from my grandpa, but it's so funny. As soon as I start thinking about him, I'll look down there's a penny with the heads up. And that's just kind of his token of a message to me. So you do have to acknowledge that when they're giving you these messages and you can talk to them anytime, but do take into consideration, like if you're, if all of a sudden you see a butterfly and they pop into your mind, that's not probably a coincidence. It's probably the butterfly was there as a symbol and then popping into your mind is them to tell you that that was them. So would you encourage individuals to sort of document, to write this down, so then they can sort of see some patterns? Um, is, is that a way to sort of keep abreast of, of this communication with someone on the other side? They can, or that's usually used when you're sleeping and you get dreams. So what I say for people at night who feel like they get visitations in their sleep, like all of a sudden, you know, Auntie Lolo is always coming in your sleep and popping in and you're like, is that, is that my mind who wants to talk to her? Or is that a message from her? So then you would just always keep like a journal beside your bed. And then as soon as you wake up, you would write whatever it is that you got. And if it, even if it's in the middle of the night and then you put it back down, then you look at it and see if there's consistencies that continue to happen. They do the same thing as intuitive messages. The so spirit guides and things like that will give you messages in your sleep because it's when you're not in ego, right? It's when you're not able to argue with them. So they give it to you when you're in your sleep. If you write down the stuff that comes to you in your, your dreams, everything that comes to you is not from spirit. A lot, you know, some of it's stuff that, that was on your mind, but a lot of it is from spirit trying to solve those problems for you. Um, and the spirit can come in, a uh, passed over deceased loved one can be helping you trying to solve those problems or it can come from a spirit guide or whatever. So yeah, I would keep a journal while I'm sleeping. And then during the day, just be aware. It's like everything else in life, right? If you're conscious and you're aware, and you're thinking of them or something pops up. Um, if it, Have you ever like felt like somebody was gonna call or text you and then all of a sudden your phone rings or you get a message? That's your like intuition ahead of time. So it's like noticing those things. It's like, oh, I was just thinking about that person. Well, yeah, that's because you knew that they were gonna call or text because your intuition was telling you and then you just didn't give your intuition credit for it. So what are some questions that people typically ask their loved ones who's passed on and when do they ask you these questions or, or would I be communicating direct? Let's just say my grandmother, I'm gonna throw my grandmother's name out. Would I say her name to you? Would I ask you the question or am I, or would I be, or would you connect us where, you know, the old school operator, you look at those old movies, you Dallas number and they put you in and then you talk directly to them. Am I talking through you? Or am I talking directly to the deceased loved one? So when you come in for a reading, if you want to talk specifically to someone, it's helpful if you bring some sort of an object so that we can hold on to that object and then we can get connected to that loved one. Because just remember, you don't talk to them very often where they can talk back, right? So if you have like 10 people on the other side who've passed away, all 10 are going to show up in that room and I might be getting messages from all 10 of them. So remember, if there's one specific person, try to be, bring something that's called psychometry that we put into our hands and that we can connect with them. And then the answer to that question is you're talking to them directly, but it's like, I am the only person who can hear them. So I'm just giving you back the messages. Sometimes like you'll ask a question, but they want to talk about something else. So then I have to say, give me a second and we'll ask your question right now. They want to talk about X, Y, Z. The most common questions that people ask, do you forgive me? Do you, do you know that, um, you know, do you know how much I really loved you? Um, um, you know, are you okay? They want and to know, are you how, okay? do you, how does the listener who's coming in, uh, bringing their loved one to you, how do they know, Barbie, that you're actually engaging with their loved one? The loved one says something, shares with you. And because like I remember um, sitting in a session, I love Dr. Wayne Dyer and I got a chance to meet mm -hmm. him before he transitioned. 
And then I also got a chance to be in the same space with I'm lo- I lost his name right now. He has this form of therapy where he um, where he talks to people who've actually passed on. And I, and I watched him do this in real time. When you're engaging with someone who's crossed over, do they give you signs? Do they say things to you to let the person know that, hey, I'm here with you? Do they describe something that they're wearing? Do, do, is it something that that person only knows that you wouldn't actually know between the, the, between the person who's crossed over and the person who's asking for the information? Yeah, so I tell people don't give me any information. So if you want to give me something to hold on to because you want to connect with one specific person, that's fine, but that's all I need. I don't want any other information. And the reason is it's my job to prove to you that I'm talking to the person that I'm say I'm talking to. If you go in there and you start saying, I want to talk to my mom, she passed away, she had lung cancer, da, da, da. One, you took away all my ability to give you any evidence that I'm actually doing what I'm doing. And everybody needs evidence. It doesn't matter how much of a believer you are. We need to be able to give you that evidence, right? So you're not doing me any good by giving me too much information because then I have nothing else to give you. Um, And so what they will often do is they'll tell you stuff like mm, nicknames, or they might describe the way that they passed away. They, uh, or they'll give you a nickname the way they passed away and your favorite thing that they gave you or something that's, um, you know, sentimental. I had uh, one of my friends who's a medium, she had some woman who was telling her like some Twinkie recipe and she didn't understand what it was and she wasn't gonna give it because she felt, she felt like she was like, sounded like a freak. But as soon as she started listing off all of these like um, ingredients to this recipe, the woman was like, oh my gosh, I know who that is, da, 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 da. So it's also our job as a medium not to filter what comes in because what doesn't make sense to me might make sense to you. A lot of times they say stuff and I'm like, I have no idea what that means, but I'm just going to say it. And it's so important because it it gave them that evidence that I was talking to who I said I was talking to. So Barbie doll, you are, let me tell you, you are opening my eyes and I'm sure my listeners eyes uh, when it comes to this conversation, because I know people are looking for some level of hope from the other side. They're looking for some level of hope uh, in their future. Uh, and as also as they're present. So what are some things people who are going to see a seer should never ask? And then what should people do to get the most out of a reading with someone like you? Okay, so what you should never ask. First thing, do I have a curse? Because you don't have a curse, so don't even worry about it. You're fine. Like there's, they don't like, they maybe they existed before. People nowadays don't have curses on them. Um, don't ask. I would say things like, should I leave my husband or should I leave my wife? Because that's your choice. We're only there to give you guidance. So don't ask us stuff that are like life um, altering decision things. You can ask us for guidance. What does it look like if I do this? What does it look like if I do that? So we'll give you this path or that path, but ultimately don't put the main decision on us. Keep it for your, that's for yourself with the information. and then as far as, uh, what was your second question? What should people do to get the, the, the most out of a reading? Um, be open-minded. So this is what people will do is they'll go, okay, if I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna go see Barbie. And if Barbie is really talking to my grandpa, he's gonna tell Barbie the word shoe. You know, And so they're like, okay, unless I hear the word shoe, she's not talking to my grandpa. Look, they don't care about your word that you gave them and maybe they'll give it, but if they don't, it's not their job to do that. If I'm telling you that your grandpa died of this, your nickname for your grandpa was this, here's a memory here, grandpa's birthday, you know, is coming up because he showed me balloons for a birthday and all of these other things. But because I didn't give you the word shoe, you're not going to believe me, then you're going to leave disappointed. So be open-minded, but also don't be a sucker. Use your intuition, your own intuition. If you feel like you're getting conned or you feel like that doesn't sound right, or even if you feel like the person's like a good psychic or medium, but it still doesn't sound right to you, you have to, above all else, trust yourself. So Barbie, what is it like for you when you do a reading? Talk about that experience um, the feeling that you it's, when you make yourself. Yeah. So it's fun. It's interesting. Um, it's interesting in the aspect of like, like I said, you get like these weird messages and you're like this, I don't even want to say this, like I sound stupid, but I'm going to say it anyways. Um, it's fun. It's for me, it's super healing because I have seen the way that it has changed people's lives. Um, it's exhausting. So what you will find that people who do this for a living, they don't do it five days a week because the energy that it takes, like I did um, on Saturday, a few days ago, 
I did 17 sessions in one day. They were 15 minute sessions because I did it for like a fair. And I literally got finished, took a bath, put my pajamas on and went to bed because I was done for the day. So although it's very healing and I did amazing messages and you get so excited because people, you can feel that they feel healed and loved and they get what they need. It's also exhausting. Now I share with you, I have several, there's several healers that I go to and they are all women, which is very interesting. And I'm always having these deep conversations with them, Barbie, about their own personal relationship. And let me tell you what I've discovered about these ladies that I'm talking about. I would not mention their names, but they'll know once they watch the show. Many of them have not had good relationship partners. And I'm always joking them. And I'm like, if you have this gift and you have this skill, how the hell do you get caught up in these bad relationships with these partners that you have. And one of the responses from one of the women who's amazing teacher, she says, well, I'm a woman and that typically happens. I get caught up and I'm not going to say that this is her saying that. So, you know, when it, when it comes to those healers like you, do you all not see the things that are coming your way? And if, if you do, or you don't, why don't you respond to them? Or how do you typically respond to life sessions that, that, that come your way? So, um, as we, I would say this, that we can all learn lessons just like everybody else. So I, for example, I'm 40, almost 41 years old. I had horrible relationships. Like they were just like you, like you said, like, how could you not see this? And it would be because I would feel bad for the people. And that's the thing is that what happens is people like us who are open, we're super sensitive. And so when it's like, it's like picking up like a, a puppy on the side of the road and you're like, I'm going to help that puppy. And that's what we try to do. Yeah, and so what I had to do, <laughs> I, I picked up some horrible ones. Let me tell you. Big dog. <laughs> <laughs> and so we tend to pick up these people that need healing because our job is basically healing. Right. And so what I had to learn to do was um, figure out a lot of stuff about myself. And even in my current marriage, my husband and I have been together for nine and a half years. The beginning of our marriage was really hard because I still wasn't, I was still always trying to make things better for everybody else. And so then when I had that um, burnout that I told you about and I had to learn to take care of myself, that was something that changed the way that the dynamic that I treated other people in my life, not, include, not only just my partner and my spouse, my husband, but my friends family members that I would take shit from, excuse my mouth, that I, you know, I didn't need to take stuff from anymore, things like that. And so when I started taking better care of myself and acknowledging that I too, just like everybody else, have lessons to learn, need to be loved, deserve things, my whole dynamic shifted and my husband and my relationship became significantly better, which by the name I'm Barbie and he's Ken. And I'm really Barbie, just so people know. And his name is Ken. So this is our big thing. And so I always say, if the universe did not want me to be with my husband, they would not have named him Ken because there's just absolutely no way Ken and Barbie are getting divorced. <laughs> well, you've done the work on yourself uh, and you've observed the things around you. Does this Barbie doll have a person that she goes to that she that has the same gift that she has? So do you go to a do you go to a healer as well? I do. I have a friend, but again, it goes back to the same thing as everybody else. It's not somebody that you ask questions to all the time, because just like everybody else, I have to live my life. Right. And so I might talk to her every year or two about stuff that pertains to this. She's a medium as well. Outside of that, we're just friends um, and we, we communicate like normal people. But yeah, just like everybody else, though, my advice is you only go, you know, not often. And, and you make that time specific for whatever it is that you want to work on. And then you take that and you take the lessons and you, you do the work from that. And that's what I do. So would you say in your past relationships, barring even your husband, I mean, can be very similar. Do you think it was, is, is pretty difficult to date someone who is a, a, a medium, someone who has this gift? Um, because again, I could think about all the stuff that I used to say when I was in relationships and dating from middle high school and everything like that. And somebody sort of seeing straight, first of all, ladies, you already have this gift and you're like, I'm just going to let you hang yourself. The more and more you keep talking, the more and more, what do you think is more challenging, um, uh, being in a relationship with someone like you with the gift? not, not, let's not just say you, but someone with the gifts that you actually have. 
so again, like you said, we all have this gift. And so like my husband who would never acknowledge like being any type of an intuitive, because even though he finally like gets what I do, which it took a long time, he's super intuitive. So it's actually harder to be in a relationship with him because I think somebody might be a nice person because I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. And he's somebody, he sees somebody who's like, nope, done, not talking to them. Like they're just a jerk. They're a horrible person. I'm like, they could try to be nice. And he's like, nope. So um, I think that it would be like being in a relationship with most people. The difference would be is I think it's harder when you say what you do for a living. So that's like a conversation that you guys have to have so that, you know, because most people don't accept it, right? So you don't want to go to a dinner party. And my husband would never go to a dinner party and say, yeah, my wife's a psychic. Like, there's just no way. So we say I'm a life coach, right? And then people think, oh, good Lord, she's a life coach, right? I know that's worse than me. Worse than me. <laughs> The other gift that you actually have, because people turn a different direction when they hear that. God. They do. The beautiful thing about my gift is that even though people do that and they kind of roll their eyes, I'm lucky enough that spirit will give me some really cool messages to give them that give them kind of a coaching session and a conversation without me coaching them. And then they're like, oh, she really is good. You know, so thank goodness, like it's not that bad. But um, I would say the, the hardest part is being a parent. So are you, I was going to ask you that. So I'm sure there are times where you, you can't turn this gift off. And does it cause a rift in your relationship with your children? Let's just say, so I used to date a young lady. She was a part of a community called our Sarah set. And before she would leave the house, this is before we dated, this was in college. She, her dad would do these readings. And many times she could not go to parties. She could not go to events. And then I asked, her, I said, well, were the reading's accurate. And she would say, yeah, but you know, when you're a teenager, you can care less about the reading. It's like COVID, you know, teens, young adults, you're like, I'm invincible. It's not going to happen with me. Is there sometimes a rift with the children when it comes to you turning that gift on in spaces where they don't want, that they don't want to hear it? Um, so with my 12 year old daughter, yes. Just simply because she feels like I'm overprotective, but she doesn't, and she knows what I do and she gets it, but she's like, just let me be. And I'm like, and I can, I'll let you make your mistakes, but when I can feel somebody's energy is actually really bad, we're not going to let you go into that situation. I don't think I would do a bunch of readings before my kids went out all the time, because you do have to let them make their mistakes. Um, I find I also have a six-year-old son and his biggest thing is that he tells people, well, when you die, you just get a new body. What's the big deal? You know? So I have to teach, <laughs> I have to teach them to be more sensitive to the fact that people, you know, like they have, they don't have the same beliefs or they may be a little bit more sensitive um, to things like that. But yeah. So Barbie doll, what are some of the other services you offer um, besides this gift that you're sharing with us right now? So I use my ability to talk to spirit and I do personal coaching and business coaching. So I offer that. I also teach classes on intu intuition um, and developing those skills. And then and in a different type of um, field, I work on helping people with burnout because like I said with myself, I had my own personal burnout where I, I probably could have left my two children two years ago had I not stopped what I was doing. Um, so I work with people on just it is trusting your intuition as part of burnout, but also just, um, you know, the, the need for more and more and more constantly all the time is something that we have to look at. Well, burnout is real. I say this all the time in my space and my space being an education consultant. Uh, I'm constantly working with teachers. I, I'm constantly working with young people, administrators, for-profit, non-profit, and especially in this time of COVID where there's racial unrest there's political mm -hmm. stuff going all over the place. There's dogma being spewed at individuals. They're just bad language. And we got to sit in front of a Zoom Zoom class all day and every day. And it, there's a lot of burnout that exists amongst everybody. So again, I want to encourage you all to check out a Barbie doll, what she's doing. How can our listeners get in contact with you if they want to uh, get some of your other services and if they want to just have a conversation with you? So oh, my company is called Pathways to Gratitude because I believe that that's what I'm teaching. So they can go to um, pathways to gratitude.com. They can look me or they can email me at info at pathways to gratitude.com. Um, I'll be launching uh, a Barbie doll uh, YouTube page. So it's B-A-R-B-I and then D-A-H-L. And um, they can always reach out to me at my phone, which is 657-221-9204. Wow. 
Um, I love that. I love that. Now, most people say, what impact do you want to have on the world? But this is sound bombing. And we say, what sound do you want to leave within this world? I want to leave the sound of gratitude. And I don't know if it actually has a sound, but for me, it's like a sound of your heart just feeling full. Well, Barbie doll, it's been a pleasure hanging out with you, talking to you, engaging you. I'm definitely gonna bring you back to talk about burnout to go a little deeper. But the second part of our show is called the Super Bomb Questions. And this is where I ask you some questions. We call them rapid fire questions. And as soon as I ask a question, Barbie, I need you to respond as quickly as possible. But since you're a seer, you probably already know the questions that I'm going to ask you. So I'm gonna mix them up. Actually, no, I'm not. So you ready? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so what is your favorite word? Um, love. What is your favorite quote, Bible verse, or just maybe a lyric that you love? That's a hard one. I'm bad at memorizing stuff. They just give it to me. <laughs> they, just, uh, I, they just give me stuff, so I don't think I have much memorized. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got you. What's your superpower? Uh, my superpower is being human. What's your spirit animal? My spirit animal is a monkey. What moves you to tears of joy? Mm, real people. Mm, what do you wish you had more time to do? Mm, be with my kids and my husband. What are the books or books you've given most as a gift and why? Um, the Presence Process by Michael Brown. Amazing process for people to do if they're starting to try to figure out who they are and how to meditate. Um, and it, it puts them through um, understanding where they, why they're making the decisions they're making based on the past. Um, I'm into liver cleansing. I'm weird about that, but I just started it because of part, having a breakdown and my body shutting down. So there is a book by Andre Moritz um, that's the liver and gallbladder cleanse. And I've been doing that and I've, my health has gotten significantly better just by doing that. And I took my stuff off of all of the other stuff that they were giving me at the doctor's office and just did this and got significantly better. Um, and then I would say for fun, what book do I love? I love Gone with the Wind. Such a lengthy one. <laughs> that's that's a fun. What's your morning routine? Morning routine. Wake up, see what my children are doing, and start putting them in order to get them off to the whatever their day is. <laughs> <laughs> what guides your heart? Uh, I think spirit. Yeah, I know I'm supposed to give it right away, but there's so many things, right? But really, spirit does because every time I just get this. Um, immense amount of gratitude it always comes from spirit barbie doll if you were in the Miss america talent competition what would your talent be laughing laughing and we're going to leave out with laughter i thank you for <laughs> joining me today you have been a blessing to me and i'm sure to my listeners you are really helping us start 2021 on the right foot. It's my hope that my listeners will reach out to you, maybe for a reading, maybe to engage you, maybe just to talk about, you know, what, you know, talk to their uh, loved ones who's crossed over. But it's been a blessing and an honor to hang out with me. So thanks for joining me today. Thank you so much. I also want to thank my engineer, Alexander Block, my super duper producer, Nicole Klimpaka. Get well, get well. We need you. Supremacy for our theme music and all of you for listening. Make sure you subscribe, leave a comment and stop being stingy and share me with all of your friends because we're on every platform. We are on every platform and we would just add it to the Pandora platform. So there's no excuse not to listen. If you also want to make a donation, you can do that. Buy me a cup of coffee backslash Sound bombing, and as always, believe that something wonderful is about to happen, but some people miss the message because they're too busy looking for the mess. Not you, because you're tuning in, and thanks for listening today. Peace. The Super Bomb Questions are brought to you by Mountain Made CBD. Mountain Made is changing the CBD game by offering a line of high-dose CBD tablets at an affordable price. Their products are THC-free and third-party tested for accuracy, cleanliness, and potency. Their products, which ship nationwide, include Build for CBD saturation, Boost for precision titration, and Recover for rest and rehab. With nine years experience in hemp and fitness, Mountain Maid's founders are focused on creating a quality product to help those who live an activated lifestyle. Check out 
mountainmade.life. Again, that's mountainmade.life to find out more about how their products can help you crush life. Remember, their products ship nationwide. Go check out their website today and follow them on social media at Mountain Made. That's the at symbol M N T M A D E. Our staff at Sound Balming uses Build before our morning workout, which helps to push our bodies to a whole new level on a daily basis. Try Build, try Boost, try Recover. Our staff is using these products to enhance our active lifestyle naturally, and we are crushing life with Mountain Made CBD, and you can too. Start today by going to mountainmade.life and ordering Build, Boost, Recover, or the multitude of other products that they have which will enhance your lifestyle. I promise you, you won't regret it.